convince Philly Wise, a former Google search quality analyst, to sit down with me and discuss how he became an SEO after working so many years at Google, and also to discuss stuff around manual actions, Google penalties, no follow, disavow links. Hope you enjoy the interview. SEMrush is an online visibility, management, and content marketing SaaS platform. Today, it unites over 5 million marketers worldwide and assists them in their everyday with help of its key tools, competitive research, SEO, content marketing, social media, and advertising. SEMrush always aims to provide a product solution to all marketing experts to ease their workflow. Check out their newly launched tool, Content Marketplace. Now you can order and optimize blog posts in just a few clicks to fuel your content marketing efforts. Check them out at semrush.com and thank you for sponsoring SEMrush. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate this. Yeah, um, thank you. I, I'm a little bit mad that you never did this while you were a Googler. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I didn't, I didn't have a vlog while you were a Googler, but I did have a blog. But anyway, can you tell people who you are? So Yeah, so uh, my name is Philly. I used to work at Google Search Quality and nowadays I'm working at Search Brothers. Cool. And you have a, a pretty cool history um, because you're one of the, before Google, did you, were you into SEO at all? I forgot to ask. Little bit, little bit. Um, so before I joined Google, I had my own web hosting company and web design company. And part of the web design, obviously, I was also concerned about how websites rank. But at that point of time, this was all the web and all the Vista and Google was just upcoming at the time. Yeah, the, 2005, I joined Google. At this okay. point, uh, Google was obviously already taking over. But that was pre-Panda. That was like right after, kind yeah. of a couple of years after Florida. Yeah. Okay. It's just after Gmail was launched. So how'd you get that job? How'd you go into like, hey, I want to work at Google. How'd that happen? Uh, literally, I finished my studies and I decided uh, to apply online uh, with Google directly. Any specific job or just apply? No, online? specifically for uh, search quality, actually. Okay. Uh, so my, uh, st my uh, academic background involves information studies. Okay. Uh, so in the, very simple way, I'm a librarian with programming skills. So I have an interest in information science and information studies. That was the original people who worked on search were exactly that profile. Uh, librarians yeah. who liked programming. Yes, So, uh, but they weren't necessarily librarians, so. Well, but, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I focused on. PhDs with like crazy math Exactly, skills, exactly. Right? I'm, I'm not a PhD, no. absolutely not. But um, uh, I, I, I actually did work in libraries and stuff yeah, also cool. before, uh, during my studies and stuff. And it was great. I actually enjoyed that. Like, I, I, I'm one of those li boring librarians that actually enjoys the work. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, at Search Engine Land, the guy, the guy I took over for, I took over for at Search Engine Land, Gary Price. Yep. He was a librarian, he still is, I think, a librarian. That's where he got all his knowledge around search. So anyway, yeah. it's, it's fascinating so, speaking to a librarian about search because they have a, a really unique perspective on things, I think. Yeah, actually, I was surprised that uh, uh, from that perspective, uh, like I applied to Google Search Quality uh, uh, directly myself. I actually never expected to get an answer. Yeah. Uh, I did. So, so to my surprise, obviously, happy surprise, I had my interview with them and I joined them and I actually found there were not that many librarians within the company, which isn't necessarily bad because you have a lot of different views from a lot of different industries coming in. But statistically, I was a little bit surprised, to be honest, coming from my background. So so you joined the, that team, the search quality team immediately? When yes. You, and this was in 2004? Five. Five, okay. Yes, in the early on uh, years of the search quality team. Uh, they started early on and uh, I was one of the, I was within the first uh, year of hires. And that was not in Mountain View? No, that was in Dublin. Dublin. Yes, this was the expansion. Uh, they started a little bit earlier in Mountain View, but uh, they fully started. Where, where was Mac, what was Mac Cutts' team then? He was search uh, quality or who was spam? No, Matt Cutts' team uh, was basically uh, both. Right. Because he headed the spam team from an engineering point of view. Right. But also, he had a separate team that came from uh, the other side of the company, uh, where search quality also falls under. And they were actually doing the penalties. But they reported on technical level back to Matt. So okay. Matt was basically the leader of both and you were from a technical point and of view. The search quality team is very separate, not very, it's somewhat separate from the Webmaster Trends Analyst team. Right? Yes, absolutely separate. Okay. Uh, the Webmaster Trends uh, Analyst team, uh, great guys, uh, but they're primarily Focus on connecting to the community, connecting the engineers with uh, potential community concerns or questions or uh, issues that pop up, and communicating this back uh, both ways, basically. So yeah, but they're doing a great job. All right, and you worked uh, for five years with search quality at Google. Yes. A little bit more, because then you kind of went to the PPC quality side, I believe. Yes. So one of the things I did, uh, I had an opportunity to advance a little bit more, do a little bit more engineering uh, type of stuff, a bit more programming. The, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but for that, I had to go 
uh, to fight invalid clicks. Now, that may sound boring, but actually it was very exciting because it allowed me to do really, uh, like really get deep into log file analysis. Yeah. Because that is basically click It, it was a huge pr problem when you started in that. It was a huge problem. I think the media was talking about it like crazy. And you came in and you solved the problem, then you were able to retire. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I wish it was the case, but no. Now, again, there's a, an amazing team also behind the guys uh, that fight invalid clicks. And it's very important, actually, for Google uh, to fight invalid clicks because uh, if advertisers don't trust the clicks they're getting, they're not going to invest more. So for Google, this is a very important part. The, the invalid click team actually gives a lot of money back to advertisers, yeah. really a lot. They also take a lot of money away from AdSense publishers. And that too, but also, <laughs> to be honest, that's one of the things that... What percentage was AdSense invalid versus search ads? It's hard to say, but... I don't know. I, I honestly don't remember the numbers, but... What's the exact number of websites you penalized while you were at Google Mag yourself? Which, how many num What's the number? Is it thousands? Is it hundreds of thousands? We're talking slightly more. Over hundreds of thousands? Yes. But, but, not, I, I, but can't, I can't say more But it's that. not manual where you're clicking like, oh, yes. that website, that website. You yes. come in with algorithms to figure out which websites they hit in a bulk. So it's it's uh, uh, multiple ways of doing this. Uh, so you can tackle individual patterns or whole domains. You can <laughs> tackle subdomains. Uh, you know, there's different ways, different types of penalties that you can tackle. Um, so, but yeah, if you talk about the in, in the end the amount of penalties that you uh, give on the amount of patterns, on the amount of pages that are impacted, which one are you measuring? The amount of pages. That are no. or the amount of penalties, which an individual penalty can range in unique, the millions of pages. Unique domain names, over a hundred thousand. Do you think? I honestly don't know. Don't know. <laughs> but is, it was a lot. Is there a good chance of somebody watching this video that you yes. penalize their site? Yes, there's a very good chance. He's very the problem. He's the reason for all your problems. <laughs> You're kind of unique in that you went. I know lots of SEOs that became Googlers. I don't know that many Googlers who became, sorry, SEOs or search consultants. Um, there's you. There's, there's a few. Let's list them all out so everybody knows. Pedro, Diaz, yep. there's... Murat. Murat. And of course, Casper. Casper. He's my business partner at Search Brothers. Business partners. So two Googlers yeah. that know all the secrets about how Google works inside <laughs> and out, that have probably penalized your sites so they could get their clients... No, no, I'm just <laughs> they, they work together now, and you have yeah. a great agency. How, how big is your company? Yeah, good. Uh, just two of us. Two of you? Yes, we're a boutique shop. So we help, we are dedicated uh, uh, consultants for uh, just the two of us because what we know, it, we can't just transition easily uh, to uh, other consultants. So they kind of have to have to work for Google for a while in order right. to get the same experience. Now, uh, and it also gives us some advantages. Uh, because we can discuss things that uh, we know from with working from within Google, seeing it from the other side of the fence, uh, we can discuss uh, things that otherwise would fall under the NDA between each other and brainstorm what could be the problem. And there's not many other people that can do that. Your NDA never ends? Pretty much, as far as I know. But I think there's a technical a technicality that probably doesn't allow for that, but I haven't checked it out yet. Because I, I yeah, don't that's think... Also right. Yeah, no, I don't think technically it's possible, but uh, on Google's paper and work. Sued. Has Google ever sued a former Googler? Uh, I'm not sure. None of your friends. I hope they don't do me, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, uh, I, I mean, I, I always wonder, like, is it fair that you could be selling SEO services? In, in a, more, a really honest way, I mean, is that yeah. fair? I mean, well, how would it not be fair? I don't know. I mean, if, you, if you have the value add of having experience working specifically on a team that understood search quality, that maybe has some insider information, could you name one piece of insider information that you could share now that you weren't able to share back then because it's no longer valid, maybe? That Something around Panda when you... No, there's not much I can share on that one. <laughs> because sorry. maybe it's not, I mean, there's things that go out of style or maybe Google gets their hands around and they don't have to worry yeah, about it. Yeah, but even at that point, yeah. it doesn't mean that Google want those things to be, va uh, to be publicly available as uh, mm -hmm. uh, data points. Now, there are a number of things that, yeah, there's a number of, I'm just trying to, while I'm saying this, trying to think of uh, and still give you some nice example. Okay, so something that doesn't work as much anymore that may be an interest uh, is, for example, keyword stuffing. Okay. Like, especially hidden keyword. It's still a violation for the Google Webmaster Guidelines. Yeah. You should still not do it, saying that as well, but at the same time, it doesn't work as powerful anymore than it did, say, in 2005 or 2002. 
Um, one of the things, one of the <coughs> types of spam that, uh, uh, one of the more memorable types of spam that I came across, uh, just memorable because of simplicity, was I saw once a website, y you know, in 2002, we still had these splash pages on the homepage. Yep. Yeah, they're like, welcome to you the site. You have a flash Cli little embed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. click on it click. and then you go to the next page and yeah. the actual content I miss the is the old there. web. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, yeah. But um, so one one very funny uh, uh, site there, or one very funny case there, very basic. Someone had hidden the entire dictionary on that splash page. They literally wanted to rank for everything. <laughs> so it was a few megabytes of text download. And you penalized that site? Yeah, of course. But you Personally? Yes. Can you name the domain name? No. Oh, yeah. So, but it gives you an idea of like, yeah, th 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 these are the more memorable, even though they're basic spam. They, they didn't it, even, to do that, I mean, that <laughs> meant nothing. Like, you can't write for every single word on the internet. Well, they tried. <laughs> I'm sure that worked well. Let's talk a little bit about Google penalties. So that's one of the presentations you gave here at XMX. <coughs> yes, I'm here at XMX East uh, and, with Barry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so how, like, in terms of penalties, like, is there anything that, the basics, like somebody who's new watching this, you know, obviously read the Google Webmaster guidelines. Yeah. I mean, what are the main things that people should just, you see people doing wrong all the time that they shouldn't be doing that they just don't know about? They're just like, they just don't know. And they're like, I assume the person who put the dictionary on their website just didn't know. They didn't know what they were doing. That's not smart spam. No, but it is spam. Yeah. And they, they knew that we're trying like to do something to, to manipulate the search engine rankings. And that's the key thing. It, it all, like the whole webmaster guidelines and everything around it, the penalties is all about intent. It's n like, even if something isn't covered by the webmaster guidelines, but it is put by intent, a spammy behavior, it can still be tackled. So that's something that maybe a lot of people don't realize. Uh, now it doesn't happen that often for the guidelines are actually pretty comprehensive in a good way. But at the same time, it you can get penalized even though then you might not fit a, a specific checkbox, if you know what I mean. Right, I get that. I mean, I think when you started in 2005, I think 2003, the nofollow came out, right? Yeah, no, uh, the one that, that was the 2005. May, 2005 might have even been after that. I think it was January 2005. I can look it up later. Yeah, I'll look it up later. And you started when? To that, in November 2005, and I don't think it was introduced at that time yet. I think it was launched after I joined. Could be. So anyway. And on that point, meaning there were, weren't many guidelines back then. Yep. And then Google introduced more and more and more and more things. Yeah. And now that line of what's black hat or not allowed has been really, really pushed pretty far compared to where it was in the early days. Oh yeah, absolutely. And do you think that's fair? Do you think, you know, Google has to do it to protect their search results or they're just becoming more confident that they could just be the internet police? They're not being the internet police. Uh, they're of course protecting their own search, uh, search index. But no, it's, it's, it's way more about protecting the user experience. Like users don't want to see spam. And for Google, that's also a bad experience because if the users see spam, they don't like the Google result, they're not gonna come back to Google. Uh, Google is a business in the end, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, they're giving us the free results. Um, as long as we use them, uh, then yeah. So what do you think when Google came out with this upgraded Penguin point, I think we call it 4.0, they don't call it that, but whatever that update where Penguin was now more real time, and with that, they devalued versus, I guess, was basically, instead of penalizing the link and making the site go down in rankings, they would just ignore the link, which technically would do the same thing. Which is basically like slapping a no follow on, on the whole It's basically whole slapping, like, oh, so you, you have this ranking over here, you're ranking really well because you have all these links. Then what, ha what used to happen is if you got a penalty, you would drop down to here because your penalty would be really bad. But now it's just ignoring the links, so maybe it feels like this because those links no longer count that we're helping you. Do you think that's a better way of approaching it? Or do you I think, think they should really like really, like manual actions hurt you, right? Manual actions most definitely hurt you. The, now, the, the they, algorithms they, used to hurt you too. Now they kind of don't. So the key thing with uh, manual actions is that when you have one applied to your website, yeah. uh, that pretty much stops the growth of growth potential of your website. You're basically stuck in the mud. For, yeah. f while you have the action. While you have the manual action or the penalty applied to you. Yeah. Uh, manual action penalty is basically the same thing. It's just a legal term. Right. right. So, but the manual action, uh, while it is applied to your website, means that you can't go further and your competitors potentially could. Okay. So you do need to resolve any manual action you have on your website. Uh, now that does not mean that you're gonna rank at the same level once you resolve it, because you ranked at that level because you were spamming right. in violation of the web mask guidelines. So the likelihood you're gonna be lower. Is that but always the case? Not always, no. Meaning no. it really depends on the penalty. Could you not be ranking, let's say you, you have this ranking up here because you're doing stuff you're not supposed to. Yeah. But will you ever 
penalize a website that has this ranking over here because you're doing stuff you're not supposed to, but the manual action doesn't really doesn't have to be because the, the algorithms themselves are really taking care of it. Manual action is not doing anything ex extra on top of it. It is all possible. Anything's possible. Yes, and you just be very afraid. <laughs> you, the, the thing is, you do need to solve these things because it, it prevents you from further growth. And in the end, we like the internet growth, the, the, all the, the search queries volumes on a day-to-day basis grow. The number of people joining the web yeah. uh, in different countries and stuff like that, it grows. The number of people coming online. It, we're still we're almost half now, right? Not even half the population is online. Uh, world on the world statistic part. So there's still a lot of growth potential. Yep. And this growth potential, uh, <coughs> you're not benefiting from this potentially if you have a penalty applied to your website. So you do want to resolve any penalty you have on your website. Now, Google wants you also to resolve the penalty. That's why they're telling you about it. So yeah, they, they're yeah. trying to communicate this to Who you. Pushed for, I mean, originally you had a penalty, even a manual action, you didn't even know about it. Meaning you felt it, but Google wouldn't tell you about it. Yeah. I think it happened to my site at one point a long, long time ago when I was playing games, just to play games to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. um, I was impacted personally by Pan Panda, which I think was a mistake by Google. You made a mistake, and then Google fixed the mistake, and I ranked fine. <laughs> um, it was that time where you actually hit that button, and my everything just dropped. No, I'm just joking. Possible. Um, <laughs> so it's, I think it's good to actually go through those experiences. Um, no, absolutely. And I think it helps. Um, but again, there's, you should really the advice here that you're giving is basically you have a penalty, a manual action. It's a clear signal. Google's reaching out to you, saying this is what you have to fix. You fix it. We want to bring your content back into our index and hopefully rank it for relevant keywords. So it's. But keep in mind, you'll have to start over a little bit potentially, most likely, because you were there uh, as high because you were spamming. Uh, or violation of the guidelines. So at this point, but the key thing is you can grow now beyond it. Without the penalty, you have now a chance to go well beyond it. Uh, but you won't have that as long as the penalty. So Matt Cutts said back in the day, and obviously this might not apply now, but mm -hmm. basically he said once you have a penalty, I think it was more algorithmic, that you're now, you're over here, and now you're like over here, and maybe is like level zero is over here, and you're underground now. He's like sometimes it's just worth trashing the domain name and oh. starting again. It can be, it really depends, but uh, every penalty is solvable. And if you need a penalty, so that's, your, that's your focus? P penalties, solving penalties? Uh, among others, well, one of the things we do is uh, manual recovery or like penalty recovery and uh, manual action recovery. And the other thing that we do is a lot is also training, SEO training as well as SEO audits. Uh, and within our SEO audits, we focus both on on-page as well as off-page. Because those, they, they, this brings me to another thing of, of, of the whole thing and something that maybe a lot of webmasters don't realize. So let me put it out there. It's your responsibility for what goes into the search engine's algorithms. Yeah, it's, the algorithms is like a black box. What that comes out of that are uh, search engine rankings. We don't have control over the black box. We don't have control over what comes out of it. But we do have control to a large extent what goes into that black box. That's our responsibility. Now, not that? fully, like Google can still ignore certain signals. Uh, the, uh, the, how they crawl us is up to them, but we can we can tell Google and help Google understand which URLs to crawl. So that's our job, that's that's on our side. So the webmaster, the web owner, uh, the website owner, the, the SEO, whoever is in charge here, they're responsible for what goes into the algorithms. And that is both on page and off page. So this is why we include in our audits both sides because yeah. that is part of what the goes in. Picture. You need and to look at the total picture. You, that goes in. Basically what you're saying is if you don't understand what's going into the box, it's your URLs, your content, your structured data, the links pointing to your website, stuff Everything. like that. Some of that you do control, some of that you don't necessarily control with some off page stuff. But, but you, you, you control it with the disavow tool, for example. Yeah, although Google wants to get rid of the disavow tool. No, that's a, okay. So that well, not really. Some people within Google want to get rid of. The Do you disavow think he's going to get his way? That that one person. Uh, I sincerely hope not. And <laughs> if he is, I'm also going to say it's up to the industry then also to say let's then drop no follow. Remember when you released the no follow back when you were at Google in yeah. December when they announced it? It took me years and years to add it on because I'm a stubborn oh, yeah, fair guy. Enough. No, but the key thing for me <coughs> is that the disavow tool, I think, like, I agree with Google. It's an advanced tool. Not everyone needs it. The majority of webmasters do, does not need to look at their backlinks. The majority of webmasters does not need to worry about disavowing their backlinks. That is the majority Do you think of I have to worry about it? Search engine well, table. since you're active in SEO, it might be. But uh, that's the key. That's actually the, the way to, to measure. Have you done any active link building? Have you, are you active in SEO? If the answer is yes, 
you probably want to look. I'm a, I would think I'm a target. I mean, Rand Fishkin said he was a target with his side back in the day, um, but I never disavowed any links ever my whole entire life. But I had had penalties around selling links because I was stubborn with the no follow tag. Yeah, that, but, but yeah. the thing is with the no follow thing, and that's for me, uh, the, if Google's going to say like, hey, we're going to drop the disavow tool, uh, which I sincerely again hope they won't, because to be honest, I think this is the only tool that allows us to tell Google, okay, we don't want you to take these particular links into consideration within the algorithm calculations, and yes, we don't have control over the website, so we're telling you. That's what the disavow tool does. They, they allow us to tell Google that, and Bing, by the way, also. They also do the same. But the thing is that if they take that away for the few sites that need it, you might also as well say like, well, should we then actually say anything regarding links? Should we actually no follow? Because if Google is going to say, yeah, you don't need to worry about the links anymore, then we should also not worry about no follow. I'm just waiting for the day where Gary's like, oh yeah, we haven't supported that in like two years, just like Realm Next, Realm Private. For, for. <laughs> in any event, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Where Thank can you. people follow you, learn more about you, hire you to tell them insider get Google information? You can find me on searchbrothers.com or affiliate.com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and connect to me there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.